Hi guys, just thought I'd do a quick video to explain a little of what's going on, the separating of the wheat and the tares. In that scripture it talks about the tares and the wheat growing together and um, the tares are the adults. They're allowed to grow together with the wheat, of course, who are the children. As Jesus, of course, he said, suffer the little children and hinder them not to come unto me, for it is they who inherit the kingdom of God. So unless the adults who have been completely devoured, a lot of you already know this, so unless they've been completely devoured and allowed the world to become the hell that it has, then they'll not make it into the kingdom of God. And of course, we've already crossed over into the heavenly realm, the north side of the equator line of the Milky Way galaxy. And it's all about the judgment. Um, the same Zionist Jews that have um, sought to rule the world and control everything that you read or hear and learn about in schools and uh, their revisionist history and controlling their preachers and their pastors that throughout the Christian churches that are all completely Zionist. What they haven't focused on, the preachers and the pastors, is the judgment. People have been deluded into thinking that judgment happens in the heavenly realm. Well, it does, if you like, and then the soul is released to come back onto the earth for this final time now, the end of times, the, the uh, last days, as it's called, for the execution of the sentence. The sentence has already been pronounced. And as Jesus, he warned about the harvest, if you like, and the reapers who were the holy angels, and judgment. Okay. His judgment has been announced and there are those out there who are squealing. They have been unmasked and squealing. This is the separating of the wheat and the tears. And I just want to read a little. Um, this is from Psalm 22:16, which of course was the Psalm of David, King David, as he went through his own persecutions before he took the throne of Judah before he ascended to the throne of Judah. He had his crucifixion for 17 years, I believe. For Saul wanted to kill him. And so in his darkest hours, he would write the Psalms. And they were prophetic of Jesus, of course, because it came from the heart of God. Psalm 22.16, which then leads on to, of course, the Revelation 22.16. So we've got before the cross and then after the cross in the Revelation. Psalm 22.16 says, For dogs have compassed me. The assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. They pierced my hands and my feet. So that was a prophetic utterance that David gave as what would happen to Yahweh in his younger flesh body, the dude called Jesus or Yahshua. Yahshua is Yah saves, Yah father, Shua saves. So it was always the father that saves, not the young buck. He just came to declare the Father and after the disciples had been with him for three years, they're then asking him to show, show us the Father. Well, he got pretty well irritated, pissed off if you like, because it's the same soul. He's exactly the same today as he was then. And he said, have you been with me this long and you still don't get it? Paraphrasing. If you have seen me, you have seen the Father. The Father and I are one, meaning the same soul. The soul of the Father was in the younger body, Yahshua, 
the father saves, called Jesus or Joshua in English. So it's all because the past, present and future exist all at the same time. You've got all this happening that way. and it's the synchronicity in the numbers because it's his creation and how would he have done it is what it's all about. So he's Yahweh, the Lord in the realm of no time, comes to the earth the first time. He's called Jesus or Yahshua, but it's the same soul. It's Yahweh's soul in Jesus. He gets crucified, cut off, he resurrects, he ascends back into the heavenly realm where he's the Lord again. And before he left, he said to his disciples, if they hated me, they'll hate you for my sake. So, you know, it's like warning us, get used to it and don't be surprised by it. And know when they're, when they're hating you, then you're on the right track because it's all about rejection. He already warned he would be rejected. That's what the capstone, it's the capstone, the stone the builders rejected is the capstone of the pyramid. And of course the pyramid is his altar. So he gets back at the end of the age and he did not tell any one of us to write anything because he knew that's how history is altered. Words are changed. Words that are written down are changed. It used to be that um, those that heard the oral tradition were more accurate than the written manipulation passed down through centuries by some scribe's interpretation or their agenda that leaves out important bits. And so what we have today is, of course, the Bible that has been manipulated by evil to exclude information. And so when he gets back here, of course, he is totally rejected by all mankind. If he is not, then he is not Yahweh, Almighty God. So Almighty God is rejected this time because everybody's worshipping the image of the beast. That's the airy fairy bullshit Jesus with the uh, long blonde hair and the short beard and all the rest of it and uh, just loving on everybody. And uh, yeah, he overturned the, the tables in the temple in his father's house. That was his own house, Yahweh's house. And so when he gets back here, behaving exactly the same, same attitude, exactly, it's the same soul and pissing everybody off because he's just telling the way it is. Nobody recognizes him. Nobody recognizes him except the very, very few who recognize the soul. And he told a whole bunch of people not to go looking for him in the deserts or in the secret places. Why? Because he'd be a whole lot older by the time he came into his public ministry thanks to the YouTube and advancement in technology, cyberspace, which is what Alec Jones got it right, half <laughs> the world watches what goes on YouTube. Okay, so don't go looking for the young buck. You won't recognize me. I'm not going to be hiding out in a secret place or out in the desert. So if they say, oh, the Christ is out there, don't, because I'll be in everybody's face this time the father all grown up now, the young buck all grown up, knowing a whole lot better, a whole lot wiser, and I'm here for the judgment, and nobody likes the judge. So, we've got Psalm 22, 16, for dogs have compassed me, the assembly of the wicked have enclosed me, they pierced my hands and my feet. And so, that's a reference to the Revelation 22, 16, And he's talking about exactly the same thing. This time it's the revelation of the archangel Michael to John, who at the time of the cross was the oldest, sorry, the youngest apostle. And so he was a very, very old man by the time the revelation was given to him on the Isle of Patmos. He was in exile and Michael, the archangel, appeared to him and John thought it was the Lord. Well, it wasn't the Lord. That's why Michael said to him, don't worship me. I'm a fellow servant. I'm a messenger. But Michael was the angel of Jesus, so he looked exactly like him. And going over to the Revelation 22, it begins in Revelation 22:15, and then leads to 22:16. 
Now, going back even one more verse. No, oh, two more. Let's do this. Three more. Four. Let's, let's just read. So, talking about the end time, he that is unjust, let him be unjust still. So, why was it a reference to future, but yet talking about things that had already been accomplished? Because all souls reincarnate. And at that time, by the time that the revelation was actually given to John in the year 96 AD, on the 96th day of the year, because that was the day of the resurrection, so by the time this is given to John, all souls had been on the earth and had lived their lives at least once. So that's what is being judged now. The sentence is being carried out now on all the lives. That have been so a lot of you who have been watching rejected him then. All the Christians who are back here today as, as Christians who have rejected him, well, you were all then then and you rejected him then. Those that have been unmasked in recent days didn't like what he did or said then. It wasn't your way. Well, it's never about you. It's always about him. He is exactly what he said. And this is Revelation 22 from verse 11. He, now what have we got here? 22 and 11. Hello! Isaiah 22, 22 is all about the key to the house of David. And of course his birth date is the 11th of January. So 22, 11. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. Now this was given on the 96th day of the year in 96 AD. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. So he's talking about lives that have already lived. If you're righteous, you're righteous. If you're holy, you're holy. If you're filthy, you're filthy. It's already a done deal. And he's saying, next one. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according to his work shall be. So every man has had his chance and opportunity and lived their life and they were either righteous